This is it. ReZero Season 2 True Ending. The stuff about Echidna, Omega, like, this is some fascinating stuff. Let's see what Echidna has to say about this. The final chapter of ReZero Season 2 was cut from the anime entirely, probably because it would have been one of the biggest cliffhangers of all time. Oh, Aside yeah. from that, it was also my personal favorite moment in the ReZero novel. Ever since I first read this chapter, I looked forward to the day I would finally get to see it animated and then it became cut content. But this chapter will always be special to me, so hopefully this video can serve to share some of that excitement with all of you. Let's go. The cave. The, walking the last footsteps. chapter of ReZero Season 2 begins in a dark place, with the sound of footsteps echoing through the corridor. Aw, oh, shit. Due to the melting snow, the mud and gravel were painfully cold underneath her bare feet, but she continued walking until she reached the outside, seeing the sunlight again for the first time in four- Jesus Christ has come out of the cave, resurrected. Her bare feet, but she continued walking until she reached the outside, yeah. seeing the sunlight again for the first time in 400. 400 years. 400. Echidna, Ryuzu's body. She expected her reunion with life to be rather moving, yet not a touch of emotion could be found in her eyes. Her lack of amusement was disappointing, yet something that impressed her was how well the reactive- Oh shit, he fucking reading this- Oh god, this is, this is an Echidna audiobook right now, let's go! Activation ritual had remained intact. As she adjust That's the important thing. Reactivation ritual. Something that impressed her was how well the reactivation ritual had remained intact. Reactivation ritual remained intact. Somehow this helped her overcome this seal, right? There's like two separate bodies. So, uh, there's, well, there's an echidna that's a corpse, but that's not supposed to be what a, the Witch of Greed looks like. So echidna and Witch of Greed, two separate identities, two separate bodies. I don't know. Somehow we're supposed to know. We're, it's assumed that echidna got sealed away to by Volcanica here, right? But suddenly echidna has surpassed that with her clever tricks. Thank you, CC Flitz, for the two month of prime. As she adjusts her eyes to the bright sun, she silently applauds herself for the convincing performance she delivered. As expected, her plan was successful. The fact that she's alive again was proof of that. Mm -hmm. The pink-haired woman appeared uncomfortable in her small body, but- Now, is this white- So, the next time we see Omega or Echidna, right? She's gonna have this white jacket drip? Or maybe she's gonna uh, intend to get a black jacket to confuse us and think that she's part of like, the other Ryuzus. But knew she would eventually grow accustomed to it. Adapting to things was never an issue for the thirst for knowledge incarnate. Because she was no longer Ryuzu Shima, she decides to call herself Omega, Ooh. which means the end according to Subaru's memories from Earth. Omega's only regret was not being able to witness Amelia suffering during her third trial. Although she despised Amelia, Omega also appreciated her cooperation. If Amelia hadn't broken the barrier, Omega's half-elf body wouldn't be able to leave the sanctuary. So, for that, she was grateful, but think- It was all part of the plan, right? It, the, the entire plan, Amelia had to clear it. about Amelia made Omega's chest overflow with emotions, so she ignores them and ventures out through the forest while opening and closing her hands to make sure they're functioning properly. Reflecting back on the final events of the Sanctuary, she notes that Beatrice has parted ways with the Archive, Roswell has lost his guiding light, and Garfield is still completely filled with anger inside. She looked forward to watching over them, from the sun and in the shadows. 400 years, this world had awaited her return. So like, what's she gonna be doing? She's just gonna stalk us now? Always in like, y you know Otto? When he's like, hiding with the little two tree branches behind like little shrubs like is that what omega's gonna be doing oh just peeking through trees behind oh we're just watching i wonder if we'll ever see her as a random easter egg in the background right a white jacket ryuzu if we ever see that in season three oh man i'm gonna freak out and what it offered her now was infinite potential to satisfy her inexhaustible curiosity she picks a flower and pops it into her mouth, questioning why it would someday wither. Both flowers and memories alike would eventually grow faint, and Omega wondered if perhaps now she'd be able to someday understand. Why must love fade? Once again, the wind- Why must love fade? Sounds like she also has an issue with things not being forever. Like the whole thing about Biko and her unwillingness to leave the library is because like, Subaru, you're gonna die. 
very soon too compared to my lifespan. Nothing is forever. If that's the case, then I'd rather hide and never experience pain. Echidna seems to have something similar. Why must love fade? Nothing is eternal. Once again, the witch was unleashed upon the world. A new witch? The witch of greed? Omega? How does this work? The witch of end? And does she have an authority at this moment? That, that's the thing. Like, how did this shit work? We know that the authority of greed is the tomb of wisdom. Does this Ryuzu, this Omega person, now have the same authority? I don't know. Yeah, so that's how season two was supposed to end. Of course, my garbage video doesn't do it justice, so if you'd like to read the chapter yourself, it's right at the end of Light Novel Volume 15 or right at the end of Arc 4 in the web novel. There's multiple reasons I call this my favorite chapter. Firstly, it gave an additional purpose to all the happy moments in this season's conclusion. Now, instead of just being there, they also serve as build-up for a shocking plot twist that completely changes our perspective of what we saw this season. Mm -hmm. Echidna was always the one in control. Everything that happened was all just part of her plan. It was mm -hmm. like Subaru and the rest of the cat does the biggest manipulator of them all right we thought that amelia just clapped echidna and echidna just a hater crying and whining but no bro it was all part of the plan everything was according to the plan past were just echidna's puppets who miss one second and we're back and the rest of the cast were just Echidna's puppets who mistakenly thought they had free will. The reason Echidna always looked like she was planning something is because she was. she was. The chapter also highlighted her curse. For the first time, we got to witness the affliction Echidna suffers from endlessly. The insatiable desire for unattainable gratification. That's a curse? To witness the affliction. The chapter also highlighted her curse. For the first time, we got to witness the affliction Echidna suffers from endlessly. The ins I thought that... This is simply a byproduct of having the witch factor of greed. Somehow her personality got switched. But this is a curse. She's cursed to always be thirsty for knowledge. Satiable desire for unattainable gratification forever plagues Echidna unwavering in both life and death. It's why her second coming lacked any pleasure or joy. Even after being dead for 400 years, almost immediately upon resurrecting, life alone- She's just thirsty for more knowledge. She's not even happy about this. Alone was no longer enough to satisfy her. No matter what, she always needs more. And that's what makes her such a perfect example of greed personified. That's the th and, and here's the thing about how similar greed and gluttony is because greed right now is being shown in the context of knowledge, but how different is this from gluttony and the hunger that can never be satisfied, right? Obviously, we're talking about insatiable need for food when talking about gluttony, but there's something so similar between greed and gluttony. It's just like, it's, it's so the same. But to me, greed is just basically gluttony without food. And this right now is just for knowledge and, you know, Daphne... She suffers from so much hunger, right? And it'll, it'll never be fulfilled. And same with Echidna. No matter how much knowledge she has, she will never be fulfilled. She's just basically just like a, a hollow, like an empty ghoul that's always consuming. Why must love fade is my favorite quote from the novel because I think it describes Echidna flawlessly. I interpreted love fading as a metaphor for Echidna's fleeting satisfaction. Because of the curse, until that curse is lifted, everything will seemingly fade. Greed is a bottomless pit. Greed makes it impossible for her to be satisfied, so the reason love fades is because of greed. But the fact that Echidna's asking that question means greed is the one thing she doesn't understand, despite having infinite knowledge. It's very poetic, and this chapter was <laughs> really the first time the author let us understand a little bit about Echidna. It might have been the shortest, most simplistic chapter of the entire novel, yet I felt it was by far the most impactful. But for anyone who's wondering how Echidna revived herself, it was the result of two things. A reactivation ritual that was established even before her death, and Ryuzushima accidentally taking the trials 10 years ago. Accidentally? Was that part of the plan? Was that part of the plan or... It's, I mean, accidentally, right? So it sounded like this is all just spontaneous. She got bailed out here? After Echidna's death, Roswell discovered that her experiments were unsuccessful because she was trying to put her soul into an empty vessel. However, if the vessel already had another soul inside of it, it was possible to possess their body by eliminating the lesser of the two souls. Hmm. So Roswell has been putting his soul into empty vessels to become ABCD Mathers. For Echidna, there was a vessel that's already possessed. Sorry, there is a soul in it. But then she possessed that. And then basically just beat it out. 
okay. I mean, at the end of the day, it's still a vessel with, you know, a, a, a dominant soul in. But the difference here is that there used to be one and Echidna's soul just beat the Shima soul out. Thus, during Ryuzu Shima's trial, Echidna planted a small piece of her soul in Shima. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. So it was a small fragment, and that's why, right, that episode, when there was Echidna voice actor coming out of Ryuzu Shima's, you know, mouth, I was like, what the hell is happening? And yes, break time as well. Break time hinted that Echidna has a plot. Echidna has a plan at the end, and she's smirking. This was it, bro. This was it. Shima's body. Ever since then, she'd been slowly taking control of her body until finally she possessed her completely, which essentially killed Ryuzu Shima. This no! is why we hear Echidna's voice coming from Shima in Season 2, Episode 2. Yeah. I love this little Easter egg, man. After possessing Shima, Echidna just needed Emilia to break the barrier to make it safe for her to venture beyond the sanctuary. Everything went according to her plan, and she reincarnated as Omega. So far in the novels, Omega has been completely absent from the main story, though. She should have named herself Sigma. She, 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 she should have named herself Sigma in, in, in order to rhyme with Shima. A little bit of homage and a little bit of memory. But I think that the term Omega, the last Greek alphabet, there's like deeper lore meaning in what Echidna Omega now represent. But Sigma would have been fucking hilarious. Everything went according to her plan. And not only that, it may even play in with the meme of like, you know, like the Echidna body and, and the, the corpse, right? Having like a... A nose that looks like the fucking Moyai emote, and somehow that's supposed to represent Sigma, right? It's just more memes. And, and she reincarnated as Omega. So far in the novels, Omega has been completely absent from the main story, though I do expect to see her again once we're closer to the end. Thankfully- Well, I don't know. It's three years ago. I don't know how many arcs has been in this. But it's looking like she is just not gonna show for a long time. She's gonna be in the shadows. And Annie News also said, Omega is very interested in, in Garfield and Subaru as they're going to be inevitably um, going to come into conflict with a certain him. Who knows that could person could be? We can follow Omega's adventures by reading her series of side stories. They are side stories, so there's not going to be too many big reveals. The hell? She definitely doesn't look like Ryuzu now, right? She looks way more like, you know, Echidna. Well, with the hair color, it's no longer pink. It's looking like she got like a haircut. I don't know. But also her jacket, she changed to black. It's not going to be a white jacket that Shima used to wear. ...of side stories. They are side stories, so there's not going to be too many big reveals, though I will summarize the first one to at least give you an idea of what's been happening since season two. I'm down. What's she up to? Before she left the sanctuary, Omega recovered her special mana crystal that contains the souls of all the other witches inside of it. From the... What?! There's a mana crystal outside that had the souls of the witches? Wait, what? Covered her special Before she left the sanctuary, Omega recovered her special mana crystal that contains Where was it? That's crazy. That that's an insane. Like 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 the witches are such important beings. You kept everything. It just just out there? That's crazy. That's insane. You just had it hidden in public sight? Nobody fucking knew. It's just uh, all these witches' souls are just in a fucking random rock in the sanctuary. What the fuck? It's the souls of all the other witches inside of it. From okay. the crystal, the witches can watch everything Omega does and interact with her too. So <laughs> I wonder what the witches are saying. Like, damn. Yeah, this shit's fucking exciting. I, I wonder if they're hyped. They're like, damn, girl. You really pulled this shit off. Or like, like I, I wonder if Echidna ever mentioned the plan to them. Or they're like, oh my god. What the fuck? You actually did this? So these side stories have a lot of funny dialogue. Anyway, she ventures into the forest and beyond the sanctuary, but runs into a life-threatening issue. Snow is cold, and people freeze when they are frozen, so Omega tries to use fire magic to raise her body's temperature before okay. she dies of hypothermia. Remember, Omega used to be a mage as powerful as Roswall, however, she just got a brand new body that came with a brand new gate. Mm. Because she hasn't yet had the chance to adapt to it properly, the fire magic went horribly wrong and caught the surrounding forest on fire. Oh no! Now, instead of freezing to death, she's about to burn to death, and if this sounds hilarious. I can already imagine all the witches also backseating her and saying, What are you doing, you fucking idiot? We're gonna get burned down now! If she dies, then her master plan would all be for nothing. Plus That's crazy. That's insane. She literally caught- This is such, probably such a funny moment too for them. It's like, oh my god, I finally like came back to life, but I burned down a forest accidentally and now I might die. Plus the other witches inside the crystal would die too, again, or something. Ryuzu's gate wasn't suitable for using water magic, so instead Omega uses wind magic to redirect the flames elsewhere. 
This allows her to survive, but ends up spreading the fire. <laughs> even more. That's After just terrible. barely escaping death, Omega felt exhaustion for the first time in 400 years. While she's resting, a group of bandits approach her with weapons. What a group of bandits might have wanted from a defenseless looking lolly is up to your imagination, oh, but no. Omega tells them she'll do whatever they say if they're able to remain standing for the next 30 seconds. Because she's preparing a magic spell. Omega then reveals her true form, allowing her soul to visualize behind her. After seeing- Like a stand? <laughs> Like, like, like a fucking stand, bro? A kid that can come out like this? Like a stand? After seeing the face of the Witch of Greed, one by one, the bandits dropped to the ground, puking their guts out, slitting their own throats, Damn. and foaming at the mouths. There were 18 bandits in total. What the hell? Is it just because of the sight of a kidna? I mean, people have said that people have done this shit simply at the sight of a kidna before. It was mentioned before. But there's also something about, like, don't look at gluttony's, like, eye or something, right? So, like... They just go crazy. They see a kid and it's just like, Ugh! And not a single one survived. Omega loots their bodies, finds some new clothing to wear, and then continues her journey as if she didn't just murder 18 people and burn down an entire forest within just 10 minutes of being That's after, that's the first 10 minutes thing she did? Being alive again. That was the first 10 minutes as soon as she steps out, accidentally kills herself by, you know, causing a forest fire, then makes the forest fire worse. Then a bunch of bandits show up and she kills them by flexing her stand powers. And all the other witches right now are just laughing. They're just like dying. They're like, oh my god, this shit is so scuffed right now. I can't believe you actually made it out. But like, damn, I cannot believe what I'm seeing right now. The first Omega side story, and I thought it did a great job showing how dangerous witches really are. It can yeah, dangerous and funny. Like, this whole side story is just hilarious but fucked up. Uh, quite literally just reincarnated, and already she's causing unprecedented amounts of destruction. <laughs> the following stories aren't quite as eventful, but I'd still recommend reading them because Omega is best girl. I hope you guys enjoyed this If we ever- I wonder if we're ever going to randomly hear like a forest fire in season 3. You know? Like in season 3, there's like a brief like, I don't know, newspaper, someone ran and talked about, Yo, did you guys hear about that forest fire that happened? Or like the, the bandits that were killed? If we ever hear about it, then it's just like, boom, easter egg, side story, Omega. Video, I'm also hoping that Omega will get an OVA or something, but maybe I'm just in denial that my favorite chapter is never getting animated. No, that is fucked up. That, that's so messed up that this is omitted from season 2. And guys, some of you guys have already seen season 3, episode 1, right? You guys saw the leaks. Omega was not in the elites, right? Like, she, like it was like she was not present in season three, episode one, right? So like, it's looking like they're just saving this shit. The anime only experience is gonna be they're just gonna be saving this shit. And since she has no significant um, impact in the main story, as three years ago, right? As late as three years ago of whatever new arcs were there, we can assume that it, she just gonna be MIA, and the anime onlys are just. Not gonna know shit. I feel bad for them, but at the same time, it's gonna be crazy revelation for them too when they realize that holy shit, Echidna has escaped and is Omega now. But that's it from me. Please go give Mr. Echidna's video a like. Here's the link. Check out his channel if you haven't, and I will see you next time.